Today, I'm here today again to talk about this book, Built to Go Global. The book Built to Go Global is a very important book for all entrepreneurs and aspiring business people, particularly those who are going for retirement that would like to do entrepreneurship or produce products that they would like to sell in the international market. So today I'm coming to talk to you on the 30 reasons why you need the book Build to Go Global as an Entrepreneur. If you are looking for market to sell your product abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. You will find it difficult to get buyers abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. <laughs> if you like a book full of stories about to drive home the point rather of the message that is being passed across in the book then you will like this book build to go global because the book is full of stories and case studies if you are looking for why many business people drop out of export business then you will love this book then you will love this book if you want to build a successful business in export then you will love this book. If you want to build a sustainable export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready for the export market, because the challenge of readiness is a big deal in export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready, that's examining yourself to know if your business and yourself is ready for export market, then you will love this book. If you want to build a global brand, then you will love this book. <laughs> if you want to generate foreign exchange, maybe as an importer or as an exporter, because the number of importers and exporters are having a big challenge right now, particularly in Africa, in Nigeria in particular, if you want to generate foreign exchange to fund your import business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for a checklist to validate your readiness for export business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to effectively price your product in a competitive manner, then you will love this book. If you want to know the area of capacity building that your business needs to be able to do export business successfully, then you will love this book. If you want to know the signs and symptoms of a business that is not export ready, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to enjoy the government incentive as far as export business is concerned, then you need to get this book. If you want to gain market share in market abroad for your product, then you will love this book. If you want to know the benefit of selling your product abroad, then you will love this book. If you are thinking of exporting after retirement, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to learn why some businesses fail in export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know the reason for high mortality rate in export business, particularly in developing country, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to avoid dropping out of export business, then you, love, you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to get a partner abroad to support your export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for export market with high demand for your product, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know the challenges of doing business abroad and how to avoid them, then you will love this book. If you are looking for a template to follow to minimize your error rate in export business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to know your customers, we call them the CSW of customers in the export market, how to know your customers or consumers in the export market, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to boost your capacity to meet export market demand, 
then you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to mitigate payment risk, then you need to get a copy of this book. That's payment risk in export business. You need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know why business owners, the promoters, fail in export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want your product to be found in big stores like Tesco, like Tilbury, like Walmart, in markets around the world, then you will love this book. What are you still waiting for? Having seen the 30 reasons why you will love this book and why you need to get a copy of this book, what are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now. You a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn in dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled to go global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To so be ordered at the same discount, call 080 914449. I'm here today to talk about the book Build to Go Global. And this is just a series of um, videos being done basically to be able to educate the masses, the listeners, the populace, the people, our business people in Nigeria and the world at large generally on um, the need to go global. You know, Africa today is in need of economic power, and this can be achieved if only we are able to compete favorably around the world through our products and services. Today, African contribution to the world trade is um, about 2.5-2.6% in a world of over $18 trillion in trade. What Africa has not contribute, the whole of Africa contributes, it's not up to what UK is contributing. It's not what Italy is contributing, it's more to Russia is contributing. The UK is just about 17 million people, and Africa is around 4 billion people. Having been in the industry for a while, international trade, export, import, I realized that uh, many people that try to go into the export business have challenges. Not many have been able to do the business in a successful and sustainable manner. And that's actually what made the book Build to Go Global unique different. The book is unique in the sense that it creates a template to now make it possible for a business to be able to export successfully and export in a sustainable manner. What makes this book unique in the sense that it helps you to be able to do this business in a way that it will not lead to delay, there will be unnecessary discrepancies, and there will be drop out of the business. The mortality rate of export business in Nigeria and in Africa in general is very high. So the solution that Build to Go Global brings to the table is to be able to know that, okay, what exactly do I need to do? That if I start this business today, in fact, then you are still in business because I will have developed enough resilience to be able to overcome challenges I'll have developed the skill and competence to be able to mitigate the risk and challenges that we face in the business. So the book Build to Last is a response to the challenges of business people from around the world with aspiration to go global with their product, particularly for African content. Many of 
one shall not be able to realize their dream of going global because of the numerous challenges and barriers we face in effort to be able to do business. The book Due to Go Global is the answer to numerous questions there are many people that have attempted to do this business and have failed in the past answer. So if you have failed in export business before, or you've heard about someone that failed in export business before, and you are looking at how to be able to do this business in a successful and sustainable manner, then Build Blue Global is the book of choice. Get a copy today, and you will not regret you did. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, welcome to another edition of um, this awesome program, Choosing Your Expo Market in Africa under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. If you are joining us for the first time and you would like to have access to the link to join this program every week, then I would strongly recommend you join our Telegram channel. You can see it on the screen. If you visit Telegram, uh, and you search for African Export Business Platform. African Export, Export Business Platform. You'll be able to have access to the link of this program every week, and you can always join a program online every week. We've been going through this series for a while now, and we are almost done. I think we are at the episode 14 today. And in episode 14, we are looking at um, South Sudan. Uh, we are looking at Sudan itself. We are looking at Swaziland or Eswatini. And then lastly, Tanzania. And then we'll round off next week with Togo, Tunisia, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. We started from Algeria, and we are here now today. Um, it's been an interesting journey, summarizing what we did last year and helping individuals to be able to know exactly what needs to be done um, to be able to take advantage of the opportunity available in Africa under the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. So we'll start today with this country, South Sudan. If you are joining us for the first time and you want to have access to the video of this program, kindly visit our channel, Voice of African Trade on YouTube. Remember to subscribe, like the video, share with your friend, drop your comment, and please remember to click on the notification bell so you know when we post new video. Also, I'll be talking about this book, Build to Go Global. You just heard some of the conversation around it. Uh, if you're thinking of going into this business, the first book to read in order to avoid some of the issues that many people faced and I myself faced in the course of trying to do this business, this is the first book to read. Before you even begin to learn all the technical details in detail as far as export is concerned, but to be able to know, am I even ready to go global? Am I even ready for export business? Either you're exporting products and service, this is the book to get. We'll go on a short break. Are you a professional? When we come back, then we start. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn in dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To be ordered at this click send discount, call 080-912-44449. All right, so we are starting with this country, South Sudan. South Sudan. South Sudan is a about 11 million population country. This country is also a low 
income country. Like many other African countries, this is a low income country. In addition to this, this country is called 185. Among the almost about 200 countries sampled on the ease of doing business index of the World Bank. This country is called 84.6%, uh, ranking number 185. Apart from paying taxes and enforcing contracts, in every other indices used in this uh, um, ease of doing business index of the World Bank, this country scored very, very low. So let's look at South Sudan. Here is Sudan. And you see South Sudan just below. This my map has issue. This my map was before it was, it was separated. But just below, you will notice that the, uh, the capital is uh, Juba. So somewhere around here where we have South Sudan. It says an East Central African country, south of Sudan, north of Uganda and Kenya, and west of Ethiopia. North of Uganda, north of Kenya, and west of Ethiopia. It's a landlord country. It's a landlord country. That's a big challenge. That's a big challenge right there. That's a very, very big challenge right there. It's a landlord country. The implication of being landlocked basically means no access to water. The implication of being landlocked basically means no access to water. That means anybody that will be shipping into that country, we have to use road, rail, or air. Road, rail, or air. Anybody that is planning to ship into that country, we have to work with road, rail, or air. Now, this country has animist, Christian, and Muslim as religion. For the data I have access to, did not confirm which of the religion is predominant. But what is important is to know that they have all these religion in this. So sorry. What is important is that they have the uh, the. What is important is that they have the all different religions in this country, and the population is about 11 million, 10.9, as of July 2021. Agri product is milk, sorghum, vegetable, cassava, goat milk, fruits, beef, sesame seed, sheep, milk, mutton. Industry is oil and gas. You know, maybe that's why they separated because they have oil and gas. That's the challenge. It's like the, uh, the resources of Africa has become the challenge of Africa. In the sense that the resources of Africa is what is causing a lot of countries to break up and causing a lot of fight. Language, English official, Arabic, which include the um, Juba and Sudanese variants, regional language like Dinka, but official is Arabic. English, and Arabic, low income, low income. This should not be surprising at all. This should not be surprising at all. And I say that because uh, I, I, what, I, what I mean by that is, it should not be surprising that um, it's a low income country because it's in Africa, and one of the country with big, big, big challenge in Africa. And you can see, based on the fact that GNI per capita is 431, that's why I should not be surprised that it's a low-income country. Organization is 20.5, that's a big challenge. That means there will be high cost of distribution. Uh, income level is low income. Uh, literacy is also very low, you know? Just like I've said severally that, when you look at a number of countries in Africa that are low income, we can easily explain the reason why. And what I mean by we can easily explain the reason why is because when you have a country where you have very, such a low level of uh, literacy, I don't think you, ex you expect anything from that country, anything good from that country. 
anything great from that country. If you have this kind of, um, this level of illiteracy, because of the high level of illiteracy, of course, you should expect that if the level of illiteracy in a country is that low, then of course, you don't expect that um, the people will be able to be prosperous. Why? Because to be able to think themselves out of the problem, they must fall illiterate. To be able to think themselves out of the problem, they must fall be literate. So if they are not literate, it will be tough to be able to think themselves out of the problem because they need to use their brain to understand the problem. But in the question where you have 34%, one of the lowest in Africa, inflation rate, wow. I can't understand this. This is crazy. This and a number of African countries going that route. See the level of inflation in this country. And it's an oil producing country. But just imagine the level of inflation. Just imagine the level 180 something. I will need to double check this to be sure this is correct because this looks so, <laughs> it looks so unreal as if, I mean, where will you have this level of, uh, of, uh, it's so reasonable. I can't explain it. Household consumption 34.9%, GDP $3.06 billion, GDP composition 11.4%, agree, 20.6% for industry, and of course, you expect services to be more 67.96 in services. You expect services to be more 67.96 uh, for the services because they do a lot of oil and gas. Of course, now, this is one of the countries in Africa that have the highest level of young population. 71, 72% of the population are below 25 years. 72%. This is amazing. 72% of the population are below 25 years. I can't, I can't phantom this. It's, it's almost unbelievable. But of course, with a country that have that is low income, having four, three, one. Dollar. I mean, you know the level of poverty in that country is high, and when po where poverty prevails, there are more women in the bedroom, bedroom and less in the boardroom, and the consequence of that is making a lot of babies and having a lot of children. This country have less than, even though the country is almost 10 million people, some countries that are less than 10, 1 million are even having a GDP of 2, 3, I'm sorry, import volume of 2, 3 billion. This is definitely not a market I think anybody should consider. I'm sorry, but it's a landlocked country. Even though it has a high population, reasonably, but the, there's no purchasing power to buy. Can you see the total import of this country? Six, six, seven million. Liquid pump, broadcasting equipment, engine parts, computer, insulated wires, cars, delivery truck, vehicle parts, buses, edible, other edible preparation, beer, brand, package medicaments, beer, uh, coated flat roll iron, iron pipe, rice, sorghum, onion, plastic lead, plastic, ethylene polymers, polyethylene polymers, cleaning products, neat men coat, package medicaments, neat women's suits, rubber, postage stamp, frozen food, and others. We now move on to the next country, and that is Sudan itself. Let's go to the shop, when we come back, we'll go to Sudan. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? Do you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global? Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Beauty to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To pre order a 33% discount, call 080 912 44449. So we move to the next country. That's South Sudan. So that's Sudan itself. So about 10 million, out of about 50 million countries, 10 million move out to the South Sudan and then Sudan. Sudan is not a landlocked country. It's a lower middle income country. 
fairly uh, fairly uh, rich. Ranking 171 and scoring 44.8 on the ease of doing business. Not a good one, I must say. In all the indices of ease of doing business, registering property is the easiest. All other ones, this country, no wonder the country has around 177 of about 200 countries that were used in this. Uh, this country, you can see in all these indices, it just registering property you know, that is a lot better. Many other indices from starting business, dealing with consumer permit, getting electricity, getting credit, uh, protecting minority investors, paying taxes, um, trading across borders, enforcing contracts. This country score very, very low. This country score very, very low. And that's important. These are challenges that are making it difficult for African countries to be able to grow its economy because there's so much challenges that a lot of African countries have to go through to be able to grow their, I mean, to, to be able to do business. And of course, that hinder the growth of the business and consequently the growth of African economy. So here is Sudan. Can you see the Sudan on top of South Sudan? Sudan is not a landlord unlike South Sudan, not a landlord country unlike Sudan, unlike South Sudan, rather. Um, you can see right there on top of Sudan, um, and with the border around Egypt, Chad, um, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, uh, Central African Republic, and of course Sudan. It's a North African country bordering Red Sea, and between Egypt and Eritrea. Egypt and Eritrea, between Egypt and Eritrea. Coastline, 853 kilometers. A reasonable coastline. Religion, Sunni Muslim, small Christian minority. Population is about 46.7 as of July 2021. Agri product, milk, sugar cane. Um, milk, sugar cane. Sorghum, granite, onion, sesame, goat, goat milk, millet, banana, wheat, industry, oil, cotton, cotton green textile, cement, edible oil, sugar, soap distilling, shoes, Petrol refining, petrol refining, uh, also having petroleum like salt, <laughs> pharmaceutical, armament, automobile, light truck assembly, and milling. Language is uh, official is Arabic, English also is one of the official languages. Income level, low middle or lower middle income country. Why? An average person in that country earned about $1,040 per annum, per annum. Organization is also very low, and it's, it's a large country. Look at the landmass. The landmass is even bigger than Nigeria. It's a very large country, you know? But the organization is very low. So cost of distribution is also going to be a big challenge, bigger than what we have in South Sudan. Okay, bigger than what we have in South Sudan, actually. I mean, um, the GDP is about 24.9 billion. Inflation ah, ah, is 50%. Literacy level is not bad, a lot better than what we have in South Sudan, 50.2%. Um, this country also have a very high level of young population. 62, but on like 72% below 25 years that we have in uh, South Sudan. Here we have 61%, about 61% below 25 years. GDP composition, 39.6%, agree. 2.6 industry and services, 57.8%. 57.8%. So what does this country import? This country is not bad. It's not landlocked, so it's easy to import there. 
But more importantly, is the fact that this country also uh, imports about, it's about 40 million people and importing about 7.48 billion. What do they import? Broadcasting equipment, liquid pump, uh, air pump, non-men, non-need men suit, non-need men shirt, non-need women's suit, uh, package medicaments, blood antisera, raw sugar, wheat, Epigenome fertilizer, pesticide, rubber tires, plastic lead, vehicle part, cars, polyethylene polymers, plastic, other plastic yeast, dry fruit, rice, tea, wheat, rubber footwear, leather footwear, jewelry, cars, vehicle part, tractors, coal roast steel, wrought iron, palm oil, oil seed, concentrated milk, and the like. This country, I think, is a country worth considering. Lower middle income country, not bad. Population, very good. And import is about 7.48 billion. My opinion, I think it's a country worth considering. Before we go to the next, the next is Eswatini. Let's go on a short break. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn in dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Fuse to Go Global. It's scientifically proven, tested, and trusted templates for building a successful and sustainable export business. To be ordered at the click same discount call. 080-912-44449. All right, let's move on to Eswatini, also called Swaziland. This country is a very small country, 1.1 million, surrounded by South Africa, actually. <laughs> um, this country is a lower middle income country. Iraq 121, not bad, 59.5% on the use of doing business index. Score almost 60% on the use of doing business. Iraq 121. Um, this country score below 100, performed better by many countries in dealing with construction permit 96, getting credit 94, paying taxes 73, trading across border 35. Wow, this country is among the best country when it comes to doing business across border in Africa. And it's a lower middle income country. It's located, can you see this red dot between Mozambique and South Africa? Can you see that red dot? It's more like subzoom between Mozambique and South Africa. Subzoom within Mozambique and South Africa. So it's a southern African country between Mozambique and South Africa. It's of course landlocked. So we have to rely on Mozambique and South Africa to get goods to the country. It's 90% Christian, 90% Christian. 1.1 million people are July 2021. Landlord country. But agri product include sugarcane maize, root and tuber, grapefruit, orange milk, beef, potato, vegetable, banana. Vegetable, banana. Then industry, soft drink, concentrate, coal, forestry, sugar, Processing textile and apparel. Language is English, official. And Siwati, Siwati, also official. Lower middle income country, organization 24.4% of the population. Literacy level is very high. Maybe that explains the reason why it's also a lower middle income country, 88.4%, and with the inflation rate of 6.2%. Even though it's a small country in terms of population, but reasonable income, but more importantly is the fact that this country have the high level of literacy. Urbanization is a big challenge. The fact that it's a small country will not make it a very big challenge. 24.4% are in urban center. But because it's a small country, the, the cost of distribution might not be as high as is expected because um, that many people are, have scattered settlement. But the land mass is very small. The land mass is very small. Household consumption is 64%. GNI per capita, 3,580. Agri, in terms of GDP composition, agri, 66.5. Industry, 45%. Highly industrialized. And services, 48%. 
This country, of course, not unexpected, has about 51% um, of the population below. 51% of the population below 25 years old. I think the country will consider. I think the country will consider considering what I can see on the screen right now. So this is a country 1.97 billion. Now, can you see? This country is about 1 point something million people. About 1.1. Unlike uh, South Sudan, that is about almost 10 million. South Sudan import is less than a billion dollars. This country that is about 1 million people is importing 1.97 billion dollars. Can you see? Of course, you can understand. This country has more money than South Sudan. Per capita income is a lot higher. Even in terms of GDP, GDP is even higher than South Sudan. $4.48 billion. $4.48 billion. So what does uh, Eswatini or Swaziland import? Refined petroleum, electricity from South Africa, I guess, cement, calcium phosphate, scented mixture, pesticide, packaged medicament, broadcasting equipment, refrigerator, insulated wire, electrical, electric wire cable, valve, liquid pump, flavor water, beer, hard animal uh, uh, food, hard liquor, fruit juice, edible preparation, edible offer, soya beans, meal, light meats, woven cotton, synthetic fiber, light pure woven cotton, car, delivery truck, vehicle part, gold, jewelry, plastic lead, rubber tires, raw plastic, plastic pipe, corn, rice, wheat, spices, dry fruit, insects, insecticide, toilet paper, toilet paper, milk, textile, leather, and so on. This is a country worth considering uh, even though it's small, but at least the volume of level of purchase is very reasonable. The last country we'll be considering today is a very interesting country, and that country is called Tanzania. Before we go to Tanzania, let's go on a short break. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn in dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? If you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global, do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To so pre-order a physically same discount, call 080-912-44449. All right, let's move on to Tanzania. Tanzania is a fairly large country, 56 million people. It's a low-income country in sub-Saharan Africa. It's ranked 141 out of almost 200 countries on the ease of doing business and scoring 54.5, among the few countries in Africa that score above average, 50%, 54.5. This country ranked below 100 among almost 200 countries in scoring number 85 in getting electricity, 67 in getting credit, 71 in a forcing contract. But in all other indices, this country did not do well at all. From starting business, dealing with consumer farming, registering property, protecting minority investors, trading across borders, enforcing contract, and resolving insolvency, this country's score ranked more than 100. It's now among the top 100. So here is Tanzania. You can see Tanzania there. It's not a landlord country and a fairly large country. A country worth considering, I must say, as far as export is concerned, let's look at it. Can you see Tanzania? Um, it's, it's in East Africa bordering Indian Ocean. 
Kenya and Mozambique. Coastline 1,424. 1,044. Predominantly Christian, 63% and Muslim, 34%. As of July 2021, this country is now 62 million people. And this country produced cassava, maize, sweet potatoes, sugarcane, rice, banana, vegetable milk, beans, sunflower seed, industry, agricultural processing, sugar, beer, cigarette, shisha, mining, like diamond, gold, iron, salt, soda ash, cement, oil refining, shoes, apparel, and wood product, together with fertilizer. The language pro, uh, so, uh, of this country is Swa Swahili and also English. It's a lower middle income country, per capita being 1,080, urbanization 36%. This urbanization level is very low. And it took, Tanzania is a very big country. It's a fairly big country in terms of land mass. And with urbanization of 36, the cost of distribution also will be high. Not going bad in the level of literacy, maybe that explains this why it's a dual middle income country, Seven, 77, almost 80% literacy level. And inflation is very low, 3.4%, not doing badly. GDP being $60.633 billion. Household consumption also is high, 62.4%. This country rank, I mean, um, contribution to GDP is 23.4% from a Greek, 28.6 from industry and uh, services, 47.6. As usual, even though it's a lower middle income country, 62% or rather 63% of the population are below 25 years. Interesting, right? 63% are below 25 years. This is so important. Just like many African countries with huge assets in young population. But of course, we have really not maximized the opportunity and potential that we have in our young population by the way they have been treated and all the issues that many African countries have today, making the continent um, really having enormous potential, but unable to realize its potential. Before I round up this morning, I mean this today rather, let's look at Tanzanian import. Not being bad, 11.2 billion. 14% of that being refined petroleum with broadcasting equipment, hot road steel, iron railway, iron ore, synthetic filament yarn, light pure woven cotton, used clothing, neat women's suit. Um, Palm oil, cars, tractor, delivery truck, trailer, vehicle park, raw sugar, rice, rubber footwear, rubber tire, ethylene polymers. All these are items import by Tanzania. All these are items import by Tanzania. And Tanzania, by the way, is one of the countries worth considering. Population wise, very good. Import volume not bad, and it's a lower middle income country. It's a country worth considering for if you are looking for markets in Africa. Remember the objective of this program is choosing the market in Africa. So it's just educating our listeners and those that are watching the video in future on, if you are trying to go into the market in Africa, here are the options available, and these are the peculiarity of each market, then we leave the choice to you. Even though I made my recommendation, it still depends on the peculiarity of your business and what you really are trying to sell. Depending on the peculiarity of your business, and what really you are trying to sell. Before we close today, let's go on a short break. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn a dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? 
to learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To pre order a 33% discount, call 080 912 Remember to pick the book. The book is now available for you to pick up. Build to go global. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Like, share, comment, and remember to click on the notification bell so that when we upload this video, you can go back and be able to watch it. I'm here today to talk about the book, Build to Go Global. And this is just a series of um, videos being done basically to be able to educate the masses, the listeners, the populace, the people, our business people in Nigeria and the world at large generally on um, the need to go global. You know, Africa today is in need of economic power and this can be achieved if only we are able to compete favorably around the world through our products and services. Today, African contribution to the world trade is um, about 2.5-2.6% in a world of over $18 trillion in trade. What Africa is not contribute? The whole of Africa contributes. It's not up to what UK is contributing. It's not up to what Italy is contributing. It's not up to Russia is contributing. The UK is just about 70 million people. Africa is about 1 billion people. Having been in the industry for a while, national trade, export, import, I realized that uh, many people that are trying to go into the export business have challenges. Not many have been able to do the business in a successful and sustainable manner. And that's actually what made the book Build to Go Global unique, different. The book is unique in the sense that it creates a template to now make it possible for a business to be able to export successfully and export in a sustainable manner. What makes this book unique in the sense that it helps you to be able to do this business in a way that it will not lead to delay, there will be unnecessary discrepancies, and there will be drop out of business. The mortality rate of export business in Nigeria and in Africa in general is very high. So the solution that Build to Go Global brings to the table is to be able to know that, okay, what exactly do I need to do? That if I start this business today, in five to 10 years, I'll still be in business because I will have developed enough resilience to be able to overcome challenges. I will have developed the skill and competence to be able to mitigate the risk and challenges that we face in the business. So the book Build to Last is a response to the challenges of business people from around the world with aspiration to go global with their product, particularly for African countries. Many of which are unable to realize their dream of going global because of the numerous challenges and barriers we face in effort to be able to do business. The book Build to Go Global is the answer to numerous questions that many people that have attempted to do this business and have failed in the past answer. So if you have failed in export business before, you've heard about someone that failed in export business before, and you're looking at how to be able to do this business in a successful and sustainable manner, then Build to Go Global is the book of choice. Get a copy today, and you will not regret you did. Thank you very much. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn in dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. 
Do you know that there is a science behind making the product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Pubis to go global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To pre-order a 33% discount, call 080-912-44449. I'm here today again to talk about this book, Build to Go Global. The book Build to Go Global is a very important book for all entrepreneurs and aspiring business people, particularly those who are good for retirement, that would like to do entrepreneurship or produce products that they would like to sell in the national market. So today I'm coming to talk to you on the 30 reasons why you need a book built to go global as an entrepreneur. If you are looking for market to sell your product abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. You will find it difficult to get buyers abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. <laughs> if you like a book full of stories about, to drive home the point rather, of the message that is being passed across in the book, then you will like this book, Build to Go Global, because the book is full of stories and case studies. If you are looking for why many business people drop out of export business, then you will love this book. Then you will love this book. If you want to build a successful business in export, then you will love this book. If you want to build a sustainable export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready for the export market, because the challenge of readiness is a big deal in export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready, that's examining yourself to know if your business and yourself is ready for export market, then you will love this book. If you want to build a global brand, then you will love this book. <laughs> If you want to generate foreign exchange, maybe as an importer or as an exporter, because the number of importers and exporters are having a big challenge right now, particularly in Africa, in Nigeria in particular. If you want to generate foreign exchange to fund your import business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for a checklist to validate your readiness for export business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to effectively price your product in a competitive manner, then you will love this book. If you want to know the area of capacity building that your business needs to be able to do export business successfully, then you will love this book. If you want to know the signs and symptoms of a business that is not export ready, then you need to get a copy of this. If you want to enjoy the government incentive as far as export business is concerned, then you need to get this book. If you want to gain market share in market abroad for your product, then you will love this book. If you want to know the benefit of selling your product abroad, then you will love this book. If you are thinking of exporting after retirement, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to learn why some businesses fail in export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know the reason for high mortality rate in export business, particularly in developing countries, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to avoid dropping out of export business, then you, love, you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to get a partner abroad to support your export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. 
they are looking for a export market with high demand for your product, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know the challenges of doing business abroad and how to avoid them, then you will love this book. If you are looking for a template to follow to minimize your error rate in export business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to know your customers, we call them the CW of customers in the export market, how to know your customers or consumers in the export market, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to boost your capacity to meet export market demand, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to mitigate payment risk, then you need to get a copy of this book. That's payment risk in export business. You need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know why business owners, the promoters, fail in export business, then to get a copy of this book. If you want your product to be found in big stores like Tesco, like Tilbury, like Walmart, in markets around the world, then you will love this book. What are you seeing waiting for? Have you seen the 30 reasons why you will love this book and why you need to get a copy of this book? What are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much for joining today. Remember, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Voice of African Trade. Subscribe, like, share, and drop your comments. See you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.